Hello, everyone, and welcome down to episode 120 of the Down South Photo Show with me, Brendan Waits, here in Ocean Grove, Victoria, Australia, and the guy on your other screen or in your other ear. It is Cam Blake in Hobart, Tasmania, Australia. Hello, Cameron. Hello, Brendan. Uh, where have you been? Where have we been? Where have we been? This is true. We've um, been off, off air for a while. We've had a couple of weeks, yeah. uh, but I think... Well, most people were pretty good with us, pretty gentle with us when we mm. gave our reasons for... Not to being... our face then. I've had a few people abuse me. Yeah. Like mm. people just stopped you in the street in Hobart? Totally. Yeah, anywhere. Wherever I've been, they've just yeah. stopped me. They're like, why are you stopped recording? Get back on the podcast. You're never in Hobart. That's true. I don't, I don't live here anymore, do yeah, I? Yeah. It's ridiculous. No, you don't. It's, yeah. You go to Hobart to visit Hobart these days. I go to, I go to Hobart just to reintroduce myself to a few people and then leave again. <laughs> got to change though. We've got to do some adjusting next year to make sure that changes a bit. So so apologies, folks, for our absence in the last couple of weeks, but it's been a good break. I think we've come back revitalized and refreshed and just in the nick of time because quite possibly the <sighs> probably the biggest photographic event landscape wise of the last 12 months at least, probably even yeah. longer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is occurring as we are going, as we are recording, not as we're going to air, but as we are yeah. recording. Yeah, I, I it'd have to be up there. Oh, I'd go bigger than twelve months. Yeah, you're probably right. I, I reckon maybe what's happened in the last twenty four hours in this world, probably the biggest thing in the last five years. I reckon. Yeah, photographic wise, I mean, you've got to go yeah. back to um, volcanic eruptions and things like that. To that's what I'm thinking. Yes, yeah. but it's not very often that. And of course, we're talking about the aurora australis and borealis. Yeah. Um, I saw a map today where it was almost covering. Collectively, half the globe. That's pretty from impressive. The, from the it? top pole to the bottom pole, there was only a slither yeah. of non-visible amount in the middle. So yeah, we're, we feel very, very lucky. Um, mm. And I mean, look, we, we've talked about aurora a lot on the show. Uh, it was only last episode where we talked about the aurora over. Well, we did. Mountain. Yeah, that's right. Um, but even we couldn't predict uh, what was to come. It's no. uh, it's been it's been nothing short of spectacular. And being here in Victoria, we we do get. A decent amount of aurora, nowhere near as good as you do down in Tasmania. Oh, look, we do all right down here. You do, being <laughs> nice and tucked away down south there. Yes. Um, but, yeah, what I witnessed last night was uh, I honestly didn't think I'd be able to get in the car and drive a few kilometres and see what I saw last night. Yeah, it was, um, I think, yeah, for you guys that are on the bigger island, a bit further north than us, like, it was still incredible down here, and it's the, probably the biggest aurora I've seen down here for sure. But yeah. Uh, the fact that people were getting it in Melbourne, uh, our good friend Colleen in Ararat yes. was getting yes. photos. I've yep. seen pictures from Bright. Um, yep. I've seen pictures from Perth, a good friend of the show, Seng and, yep. and Cheryl. They both had photos from uh, just near Perth as well. So it was pretty yep. pretty full on. Um, yeah. um, we, we've seen, yeah. I've seen photos from as far north, believe it or not, as the Sunshine Coast in yep. Queensland. Which Brisbane, is, there's people in Brisbane, I think. Inland from the Sunshine Coast. In fact, even closer to Gympie is a town called Tyro. And I saw yeah. photos from Tyro last night. So yeah, pretty amazing. So we're very, very lucky to have to have seen this. You know what's really surprising though? Is that that was the one of the biggest solar flares in the last 20 years, I think people have said. Yes. Um, we're all still here to talk about it. Like it didn't fry electronics, <laughs> it didn't end the world. Yeah. Um, but the night before last, there was a guy who was traveling around here, Sean, his name is, is it a guy from Ireland? I've okay. never met him, but he was trying to meet up while he was down. He, he racked my brain for a few details and he got a shot down in the tessellated pavement down here in Tassie while he was here. Yep. And it looked like the end of the world. It was fiery red. Um, it had a lot of people saying it had the stranger things, stranger yeah. than fiction or whatever it is, um, yep. sort of theme to it. So it was big. It was dramatic, and uh, you were lucky to see it. Um, and I was lucky to see it. I saw yeah. it twice. I guess I saw it. You did. I saw it from both angles. Um, big shout out to Craig Murphy as well, who sent photos in from. Oh, I was going to say a jingle, and and has also whipped us up a little jingle, which may make an appearance towards the back end of this show. But uh, it's <laughs> you know it's, you know what I've I've, I've I've let a couple of people listen to that yes. and the and the reactions are all the same so I think we've got <laughs> we've got to put it on the show it's uh we do. We it's do. our new jingle thank you Craig for putting yeah. that together no, um, no we never said it's our new jingle it's a oh, new jingle it? Oh. it may not be the new jingle oh I thought well, I thought we we're accepting that as the new jingle <laughs> yeah, well uh, Craig um 
my apologies to Craig. You know, he, he's, he's done us a massive favor by doing us a new jingle and he keeps in contact with us regularly. And um, and now we're just going to burn him by not using it. For one reason or another, it just hasn't made an appearance on the show yet. But that, that's okay. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> um, but Aurora Chat. So we basically wanted to come on air and this you'll notice, viewers, we are smashing the algorithm and this is coming out way early in the week because we sort of wanted to you know, strike while the iron's hot with all this Aurora talk that's going on. Yeah. Um, what we thought we might do is run through our experiences last night, um, mm. how we shot it, what we shot it with, that sort of stuff. But before we do that, we're yes. going to thank our subscribers and stuff, aren't we? Go for it. Oh, okay. I'm taking over. Uh, what do I do now? Uh, yeah. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you to all the 796 subs on YouTube. That's pretty good. That is very good. That's very four less that. than 800 and mm -hmm. 204 less than a thousand, which is good. So keep sharing that around. So thank you for you guys who listen on online and watch us online. And if you don't subscribe, press the little button that wherever it is. Yep. Does doesn't mean we jam you with junk apart from the show every week, but apart it's about as much junk as we send out. Yep. Uh, we probably need to do an update at some stage in the next couple of weeks about our downloads because we've probably had a lot of downloads on the pods as well. We have. Okay. So that's, that's homework for me for next homework. week yeah. is I will when update everyone on how we're going with our uh, audio side of the podcast. I can tell yeah. you right now, it's it's good. It's, it's good. It's a lot better than that other show. Um, they don't exist anymore. I, the, I say this often, but I, I feel like our... <laughs> all 796 people who do subscribe to our YouTube channel are genuine subscribers that it's not like, you know, uh, these big YouTubers and people just subscribe, oh, well, everyone else is subscribing. So I will. And then they never watch an episode. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like uh, a lot of our uh, subscribers do tune in regularly. So a big shout out to everyone who, um, if you have seen every episode of the down South photo show comment below, I'd be very curious to see how many of you have seen all 120 episodes of the down South photo show. I've seen them all. I have actually, no, I haven't. I've edited oh. them all. <laughs> yeah, edited them all. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Um, it's funny. I just got a message from someone. I'm going to do a quick shout out, a live yep. shout out, so to speak. Good friend of the show, Jamie, you know, our mate, Jamie. Hello, Jamie. Jamie's in New Zealand at the moment. Oh, how good must he feel about getting an Aurora being in New Zealand? Like the biggest yes. Aurora in 20 years. Yes. And it was clouded. Yes. He oh. wasn't happy. So Ooh, so, so tonight he's driven from Milford Sound to, to Wanaka Ooh. to try and get the Aurora with the Wanaka tree, even though it faces north, which I had to tell him was the wrong way. He's got there, no Aurora. So he's driving back to Wanaka, <laughs> actually to Milford Sound as we speak. <laughs> It's it's twelve fifteen over there or something like that where he is and where yes. he's doing and uh, he's driving back giving me updates. So Jamie, okay. listen to this episode and uh, we feel sorry for you, mate, because you did we, a big effort and got <laughs> nowhere. We kind of do. Um, bit of a uh, quick bit of homework. So our <laughs> this feels like this was two years ago we did this, but it's still there. Um, our People's Choice winner for Blue Hour, our Blue Hour competition. Uh, drum roll, please. <laughs> Nice. That's is Sarah time. Jane Eggins. Sarah Jane Eggins, congratulations. Yes. You were chosen by our viewers, watchers, Facebookers for the People's Choice Award for Blue Hour, which yes. coincidentally was a photo of Cradle Mountain. Coincidentally, it was a photo taken on a workshop with me. There you funny go. enough. Um, funny in joke about Sarah. She's a lovely, lovely young lady and I really enjoy her coming on our workshops. You know, hey, hey, Saturday when they used to do pluck a duck and they used to be roll the big thing. What was that thing full of? Frozen uh, frozen chickens. Well, close. Frozen turkeys. Right. Maybe is uh so Sarah's a turkey farmer. Oh right. believe. So she doesn't win a turkey. Um, <laughs> but she does win a voucher off me, doesn't she? Yes, she does. So, yeah. So a hundred dollar voucher from me. Yes. Uh I'll reach out to you, Sarah, or you reach out to me. Um and Sarah, next it. time she hangs it on you for being a turkey farmer and and the, the hey hey it's Saturday, you can tell him one hundred percent that they are actually frozen chickens. But that's I okay. know they're frozen chickens, but turkey was going with the story and now you've just stuffed it. Look, it wasn't called Chook Lotto for nothing. But anyway, that's okay. what a okay. what a terrible digression. We went way off track there. That's fine. But well done, Sarah Jane. Awesome. It is yes. a cracking photo. It is a nice shot. Uh, it's yeah. there on the screen. See? Beautiful. Maybe. <laughs> we all know it didn't get up there. <laughs> <laughs> See, I've got to literally timestamp it for myself so I know. Do you, do you, take, do you take a little note, do you? No. Huh. I just well, have to scroll through and uh, <laughs> see me oh, pointing like that. Is, is that like when you do like stacking images and you put like your hand up in front of one shot and then you go? <laughs> That's do, 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 do. right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Okay. That's cool. what I have to do. Yeah. Cam, let's get into it. Backgrounds. Um, you go yeah. first, my friend. I, I will go first. Um, surprise, surprise. This is an Aurora shop. Um, I had a bit of an adventure uh, over the last few days. I was up in Dalesford doing my little autumn workshops uh, two days in a row up there. And I was meant to come back first thing this morning, Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to everyone uh, out there today is when we're recording. Um, I was meant to fly back first flight in Mother's Day this morning. And I was just feeling a bit homesick and wanted to get home and, and catch up with everyone at home. So I decided to push my flight forward and get a flight back from Melbourne last night. So I had to finish in Dalesford, quickly get on the plane, fly down from Melbourne to Hobart, landed. Uh, another good friend of the show, Chelsea, offered to pick me up from the airport and then take me out Aurora chasing because it was going off. Uh, and then we got out of the car. We drove about 40 minutes south of Hobart and pulled up, found this shot. And it was going off. It was it was like being in the northern hemisphere. It was incredible. It was color. It was buzzing. It was it was flickering. The whole thing. So, I took again. I didn't take many shots because I was pretty tired and wanted to get home. I think I took. I was there for about half an hour, and then it sort of died off. And I went, okay, I'm going home. But when I got that file back, um, you can't actually see all that file, but higher up in the frame, it looks like you're getting sucked into a a vortex um, in the sky. It was very very cool. So. Um, thank you to uh, Chelsea for picking me up from the airport and uh, getting me out there. Uh, <laughs> well it was done. very, it was very cool. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was good. Just to and, reiterate, um, yeah. happy Mother's Day to all the mums out there yeah, for Sunday. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed your day. Um, would you like to see my background? No. So this was last night. Um, right. uh, we'll go deeper into our experiences of the night, but I got down to the beach uh, a little later on in the evening uh, after getting home with some stunning photos and texting my daughter the whole time. My daughter, Abby, is uh, she's a keen photographer as well, uh, but she's also an absolute nature lover. So she wanted, you know, I showed her the the aurora and I said, well, I'm going back out. She said, well, I'm coming with you. I said, you bet you are. Went down to our local beach there and, uh, yeah, it was awesome. We sort of, uh, you know, walked out onto the wet sand to get it reflecting off the sand, um, dodging past all the people that are at the top of the stairs uh, and that's pointing, that's basically south-ish. It's probably more southwest, south-southwest, because uh, I'm looking towards um, Barwon Heads in the distance. The lights you see in the horizons, Barwon Heads, the ones on the right-hand side of Ocean Grove. Um, and that was a 15-second exposure. So we had to stand nice and still mm. for 15, after having a 10-second self-timer and then 15 seconds of exposure time. So I'm really stoked with that photo because it's uh, it means a lot to me because my little daughter there's turning 18 this year, so she's probably going to fly the coop at some point. So yeah. I'll stick, stick that up on the wall. So great experiences to have, not just as a photographer, but also to take your kids out and show them stuff like that. Cool. Biggest question of that photo. Yes. What are you pointing at? Uh, we just said, let's point at the Aurora. <laughs> okay, so cool. And I've got, I've actually got a white cap on. It looks like a bald head. I, you know what I thought you'd done? I thought you'd like really lifted the shadows in your head. No, it's just my white <laughs> golf cap. All oh, right, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's my Ratho Farm go golf cap. Oh, actually, yeah, so, yeah, cool. Yeah. That's lovely. That's a good yeah. shot. No, nah, it was grouse. It was good fun. But mm. um, look, where do where do we start? I mean, you know, you've briefly touched on your experience mm. last night. Well, for me, it was um, two days ago, maybe three now when the solar ejection happened yes, uh, yeah. from the, the solar flare happened from the sun and there was buzz. There was talk about it being big, huge mm. and facing the right direction and all this sort of stuff. When they start talking about the possibility of it knocking out telecommunications, yeah. then, you know, it's proper. So, yeah. Then, you know, you're going to, you're in for a bit of a show. Well, the last time that really happened was 2003. So that's 21 mm. years ago when there were yeah. warnings about telecommunication issues. So, yeah. um, of course, once you see that there's massive potential for Aurora, it's then crossing the fingers and toes for a clear night. Um, you know, the, the, literally planets need to align for these kind of photos to happen. Yeah. Number one, the solar rejection. <clears throat> Number two is it's facing towards Earth. Number yep. three is a clear night. Number four is a moonless night yep. or yep. not too much moon. Um, so there's a lot has to align. Uh, the other thing is it happened to fall beautifully on a saturday night yeah it's on the, that's right it's not a middle of the week thing yeah that's right. and yeah. and right after dark so yeah. well that's the other one as well sometimes they hit and they hit during the day that's right and uh and i was watching i was the same as you all day yesterday when i was in dalesford um 
I was watching the app and it was it was massive all day yeah. long. And I'm yeah. in the back of my head, I'm like, that's gonna die before I get home for yeah. sure. Please hang on. <laughs> Please hang on. And it didn't, it just kept going. But yeah, it was big, um, big flare. Uh, like I said, all the line, all the, the stars lined up literally. Yeah. Um, but it's one of those things that you can just constantly go out and chase them and then there's too much moon or it's cloudy or whatever. This is the one out of the box where everything just lined up for everyone. And like you said, you were dodging people down the stairs. I had people messaging me all night from everywhere on the mainland. Um, yeah. I had uh, another friend of mine, Erin, she was trying to get down to the Mornington Peninsula. She said it was like peak hour going down to the, the yeah. Mornington Link, uh, Peninsula Link. It was. Um, you know, Cheryl and Sang out in Perth, they were in a car park for south. They said they couldn't even move. It was like it was like there was a festival going on. Yep. Um, where we went last night, we we had a, we were on a back road, back dirt road. There was cars everywhere. It was um, even last night as we got uh, coming back from the airport, as you come across the Tasman Bridge, there was a line of cars all the way down Mount Wellington. Yeah. There was a traffic wow. jam down the entire mountain. It was ridiculous. Wow. So, yeah, uh, but it was very cool. Yeah, big uh, big event. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Because as photographers, you know, we're 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 a we're selfish, selfish bunch. Lot. We're selfish we, bunch. We, we? we like we yeah. like to think that we can have this all to ourselves and get out there and take the photos. But you know, the yeah. fact is that this is a this is a global phenomenon. This is not something that you know is just for us photographers. It's for the world to see. And yeah. um, I must say, like, so I got out um, oh, probably about twenty minutes after sunset. So there was still a bit of a faint glow on the horizon. And I was racking my brain, right? Where, where everywhere's going to be busy. So what's going to be my best chance? But I'm also after an iconic shot. I want foreground. So I want something that, mm. you know, says Bellarine Peninsula, maybe says Ocean Grove, says Barwon Heads. So I went to the Barwon Heads bridges and started there. Yeah. And I set up my tripod and turned my camera on and got everything right, all the settings, which we'll run through in a sec. Took my first shot as a test shot and up flashed card error. <laughs> really yeah and it was like <laughs> lucky you're on a camera shop yeah and then that magic memory card that just hides in the top of my camera bag out you come <laughs> that's all good so you had a memory card fail of yeah, all, maybe, was, maybe maybe that was the electronic pulses oh, that, maybe it was true i didn't think of that um, maybe that's screwed well, i couldn't believe it i was just like wow like how lucky am i that i've got yeah. this so you know there's a pro tip for you folks keep that yeah. spam it happens to the best of us that does yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I, I sort of pointed my camera due south, uh, did a test shot with my phone. The iPhone 15 Pro will pick up the Aurora. Yes, it does. Phone. Yeah, even a 14 Pro picks it up. Yeah, yeah. So you can see mm. you can see it straight away. So it's good, um, you know, because you get a tip off that it's actually happening. Uh, so I got a few frames up there. Pretty happy with that, and it was starting to get crazy good. Like we had we had uh, beams, we had red towers of beams, yeah, red, and they were naked eye visible. Yep. Um, even under the sort of brightish lights of Barwon Heads, I could still see it. Yeah. Um. So then I just sort of wandered along the bridge, and I thought, no, I'll get down. There's a there's a the at the Heads restaurant. You'd be familiar with that, Cam. Yep. There's a little yep. restaurant that we take a lot of photos of on our down south photo show days. Yeah. And I thought, right, that'll look cool. So I went and shot that with the Aurora behind it. Went under that onto the jetty and bumped into world famous Ocean Grove photographer Pete James was uh, right. on the nice. on the jetty. And luckily, it was just me and him. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it was like great minds think alike. And yeah. uh, it was quite funny because he's a very private sort of guy and he likes to sort of keep to himself and doesn't want to shoot a lot of photos. Yeah. And as he saw me coming, he packed up his tripod and was leaving. And then I said, yeah, oh, it's it's me. It's me. He's, yeah. And he was like, oh, well, that's different. <laughs> I yeah, will yeah. stay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is funny. Like um, th there is a big challenge, isn't there, to try and get places that people aren't or get foregrounds that people haven't got. Like that's a massive challenge down here. It is. Um, and we are selfish in that way. But what I've found is that if you are a, a good photographer, you'll you're more likely than not find a spot that isn't as busy. Yeah. So you're you're already you're already already know that uh, you know, okay, well that place is going to be busy. I won't go there. So you you're automatically on the on the hunt for a different kind of place. Um so yeah, if you if you are going out to shoot auroras, do a little bit of study. Even now, start studying cool places with jetties or foregrounds or old trees or whatever it might be. So when that moment does come, you don't go to where half the state is. You go somewhere where you got your own little bit of privacy, yeah. at least with maybe a couple of other people. But uh, but yeah, the secret's well and truly out. And uh, oh yeah, for sure. And I uh, so after I had a bit of a chat with Pete, I did a few more shots. 
um, all the while texting my daughter and my wife and saying, "You go go into the backyard and just have have a look south. You'll see yeah. it." Which, which yeah. they did, and they saw it. No worries. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but then I, I sort of came back across the bridge. I just couldn't. I was walking backwards, literally. I just couldn't take my eyes off it, like <laughs> mm. just to see what was going to happen next. And then I set up my tripod right next to the bridge, and it's like this light pollution everywhere. It didn't matter. It was yeah. that bright. You just it didn't matter. Yeah. But I've set up my tripod, and I'm about to take my next frame, and then all of a sudden, Starlink appears on the horizon. Oh, so, did, 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 did. yeah, I had, a, I had a I had a train like which I got a shot of as well. I was like, really? Yeah. Could this? What's going? I just fireworks are going to happen now. I was yeah. only going to go off. Like, and then the and then the Death Star came in from yeah. left. Yeah, it so was, the Millennial yeah. Falcon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. pretty crazy, and and I think that sort of that leads me to this, and that is that people want to see this because it is a phenomenon, and yes, mm. it's it's. If you want to break it right down, it's just pretty lights in the sky. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But as human beings, like we're really attracted mm. to it. And there's something about it. There's a there's a, an emotional pull about it. There's a, I don't know what it is. I can't exactly put my finger on it. But when you see it and when you photograph it in particular, yeah, it, it kind of hits home. Like it's it's a pretty cool thing to be able to photograph. Yeah. I think, uh, I think what's interesting is those lights, they're not from Earth. Like they've yeah. they've been spat at, spat towards us the 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 electrodes whatever they are the electrons that get spat off the sun yeah. like they've travelled a long way across the galaxy to get to us and I think that's what gets you know we all like looking at stars and we all love seeing shooting stars and stuff like that well this is just that on 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 speed it's just all that kind of stuff with with every extra topped onto it so yeah. and they're pretty like they are pretty lights like you don't yeah. see these colours much in in the sky at all or yeah. You know, we have pretty sunrises, we have pretty sunsets. This is something in between that, you know, still gets the sky lit up, which is really cool. So yeah, that's right. And and mm. and the fact that it's you know so visible at yeah. the moment. So th this has been a bit of a bone of contention online. Um, so through Ocean Grove Camera and Photo, my Facebook page. Yeah, your your post went a bit viral, didn't it? Well, of course, I was going to post it that, that I was mm. out there doing this, and when I did post it. Yeah, 99% of the comments were all fantastic. And then there's those one or two, you know, oh, but you can't see that with your naked eye. This is a trick of the camera. This is Photoshop, blah, blah, blah. I think they're La called and big heads. Well, look, last night was one out of the box. And it was. when I say it was naked eye visible, it was like, duh, there it is. Like it was right yeah. there. It was so obvious. Yes. Um, but there has been times in the past where I've done Aurora here in Victoria where it's not quite as strong. And yes, I've had to use a 30 second exposure, for example, or a 20 second exposure, whatever, a high ISO setting to yep. get the shot. But I always make sure I comment that, you know, no, it wasn't as visible with the naked eye. This is the camera settings that I use to get it. Yeah. To try and put that across. Yeah. But what happens is, you know, like last night after I was coming back home for the first, I ended up going out three times last night, but when I came back home for the first time, yeah. Um, I drove past the Ocean Grove Lookout, which is another spot you'd be familiar with, Cam. We take people yep. up there. Yeah. And um, there was no parks. It was bumper to bumper. Like yep. it was proper. Yeah. And what was really cool was everyone had their phones out and I could, as I'm driving past, I could see their phone screens and it was all yeah, lit yeah. up. Right. So yeah. that was good because that showed people what you need to do to be able to see it with the color that we've got behind us. Yeah. And the difference between that and naked eye. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was, it was but, but naked eye changes as well. Like everyone sees things slightly different. True. Um, I, I get a little bit peed off with people that get on there and, and do what you said they do. And that's why I call them dickheads because I think they are because yeah. they're, they're just killjoy. Um, yeah, exactly. You know, you can get on there and say, you can find a negative in anything in life that you want and that's great. Good on you. you you're able to rip something down and ruin else, someone else's time. So I don't know, like I've had a couple of people today uh, send me a screenshot of a few comments they've had on their stuff and it's like... Yeah. Why? If you I can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Just yeah. move on, scroll past, whatever. Yeah. You know, you, you're probably just annoyed that you didn't have a camera to go out there or you were working or you, your partner said you're not going out or you weren't well. Like, Don't bring everyone else's joy down by that. So yeah. um, I had I had a similar – my my experience was a lot different to yours last night. Yeah. Um, so my experience, oh, like I said, I was in Dalesford. Um, and I was watching my phone all day and I'm like, this is going, this is ridiculous. It's like KP nine all day long. And you could see the arc of the thing moving around with the darkness as it was coming yeah. around the globe. Yeah. And I got on the plane, got to, got to the airport. Um, I wrapped up the workshop about 15 minutes early to make sure I didn't miss my flight. Uh, got out, got out to the airport. 
And of course, uh, I know there's going to be an Aurora on a plane. So which seat do I get? The middle seat between the window and the aisle where I couldn't do anything, <laughs> couldn't do anything. So, but I'm, I'm a big believer in karma as well and the universe doing its thing. So I walked up the stairs. The lady said, oh, welcome aboard. Oh, you're in 3E just on the on your left. I said, okay, cool. And I said to this lovely hostess, uh, Niha, her name was, I'm going to write an email to Jetstar. And I said, look, I'm sure you already know, and I'm probably just sounding coming across like a real geek here. I said, but there is one of the biggest auroras in the last 20 years happening right now. She's like, right now? I said, right now, it's happening, it's going off. Yep. She goes, oh, and she said, oh, I heard the pilots say something on the way up the stairs. I said, well, if if they can dim the lights, that'd be cool. You know, she goes, all right, I'll, we'll see what you can do. So I go sit in my seat and talking to Killjoys, um, I sit in my seat, this lovely old lady next to me from Birmingham sat there and she had her, her daughter and young family in front. And this other lady came on, this other lady that came on, uh, Jill was her name, ended up being a very lovely lady. But at first I'm like, well, I don't think she's going to let me reach across and take photos out the window. <laughs> she just didn't seem to want to have a bar of anyone else, which is, yeah. that's fine. That's what people are like on planes. And so uh, we took off out of Melbourne and uh, the lady next to me, the, the English lady from Birmingham started talking to me. And talking about, you know, what they've been doing. They've been in holidays up in Melbourne, blah, blah, blah. And I was getting messages. I think I even got a message from you saying, this is what it's like at the moment. I was sitting on the plane. And so I just showed her. I said, oh, we might actually see this out the window tonight if we're lucky. And she's like, oh, is that happening now? And this other lady on the window seat all of a sudden perked up and started listening in. She goes, oh, how do we take photos of that? So I found myself at 35,000 feet doing a photo lesson to the people in my row, the people in the row behind me and the people in the row in front of me on how to take photos of the Aurora outside the window uh, on the plane. All the, all the while, I'm sitting in the middle. I can't do anything. Um, so anyway, the the air hostess comes back up and uh, she goes, oh, are you seeing it out the window? And I showed her a photo that I sort of was able to get out the window. And she's like, oh, wow, that's amazing. I said, now, I know this is completely against protocol and I know the answer is no. I said, but I've got a really good camera in my stowaway up there because I've been, I'm a photographer and I've been teaching and I've just come back today. I said, I could get in that cockpit and out within 30 seconds and get some good shots if they'd let me. And she says, oh, look, I, I don't think that's going to happen, but let me go speak to the captain. <laughs> so she so she walks off to the captain and comes out. She goes, look, captain has said no, it's against the uh, CASA protocols and stuff like that. She said, but if you've got your phone and you want to set it up and tell me how to take the photo, I'm more than happy to go in there as many times as possible to get you the shot you want. So I said, I want a shot of the instruments and the window and anything you can get, shoot it on the wide angle, hold it still for three seconds, the whole lot. And so this lovely lady hostess walks off and she's gone for about 10 minutes. And the ladies next to me are like, I reckon she's, she's broken your phone or I reckon she's dropped, a, dropped your phone. Why, where is she? I said, it's okay. She, she'll come back. So she comes back and she's got, you know, this plethora of images on my phone. She's been in there for 10 minutes, just shooting like crazy shots of the instrument, shot out the window, shot of the pilot, shot of everything. And I'm like, you are an absolute freaking legend. That's perfect. Thank you very much. And what she did get, which I asked her to get, was the altitude uh, meter on the dash yep. showing 30, 35,000 feet above. So I got it back and I could hear people behind me in the back row going, oh, that guy just got a shot from the cockpit. So there's all this murmuring going on. <laughs> So then I landed and then, like I said, Chelsea picked me up and it was on. The chase was on. Like, where are we going? I'm like, I don't know. I've just got no idea. Where do you want to go? So we end up going, well, originally we were going to go down to the tessellated pavement. And I said, there'll be people everywhere there. Just like where you were, there'll be, it'll yep. be packed. Yep. I said, Let, let's go down to a place called Tinderbox, which is down about 25, 30 minutes south of Hobart. I said, there'll be people there, but there's less light pollution. It's further south. And we got there, um, Lisa came down with the kids and met me down there to take me home afterwards. And what I got, that was one of the first shots I got out. I set my tripod up, shot it with a little tree up in the sky and it was going off. And it was just crazy. You could see it moving. You could hear it buzzing. Um, it was pulsing. The whole thing was happening. It was red. It was purple. It was green, the whole lot. And uh, yeah, we were there for about 30 minutes. I think I took about 20 shots. And then I said, I think, I think, I'm, I think I'm done. I'm pretty tired. <laughs> uh, it started to die off a bit and I came home. So it was like, you know, from four o'clock in Dalesford, country Victoria to about 9.30 in Southern Tasmania, I was able to get photographs out of a cockpit of Jetstar flight JQ713 and able to land and go south of Hobart and get some shots and be in bed by about 10 o'clock. So I was pretty happy. And I thought I'd go out tonight. 
alas, we're here recording a um a podcast because yeah, the Aurora doesn't work for us. No, we work for the, so this is an interesting thing as well. So you know, going by the posting it to social media, of course. And I guess I don't know. It's just pe- people don't know. They don't understand how you know. The number one question is where where can I see it tonight? Yeah, and it's and I have to have give them the long winded answer, and that is the aurora dances to the beat of its own drum. It yeah. it it'll turn up. It won't turn up. It you know you could have absolutely perfect conditions, but it's not quite. You know, yeah, there's some one thing that one metric that's off, and and yeah. it doesn't happen. So yeah, you know as much as you. You know, you can you can predict and forecast. It doesn't always fall that way, and no. the chances of there being another aurora over the next thirty six forty eight hours are incredibly high. Yeah. However, um, nature's got to play. So yeah, well, that's the thing. It's um, and again, like I even had people on this workshop in Dalesford. Her one girl, Melissa, um, who ended up going down to Point Lonsdale Way. I told her to go down near you, and she was about to jump on the plane with me. She goes, I, "I've got nowhere to be." I said, "You can crash on my couch." <laughs> I'll drop it to the airport. Don't care. Just if you want to come down, yeah. Jump on the plane. It, like for about an hour there, she was like, mm, uh, yes, no, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe. Yeah. And then I think she had a dog she had to feed and someone had to look after something. And yeah. Um, but you're right. Like it's it's one of those, that's why it's a phenomenon. It's because it doesn't happen when we say it wants to happen. It happens when it wants to happen. And that's right. Um, you know, I think probably the the negative thing to come out of this, probably a couple of negative things if you want to take anything negative out of this whole event is one, we're probably not going to see one as big as that again anytime soon. So there's there's already going to be a false hope that whenever there's an aurora alert, you're going to see it in your backyard in Ararat. That's right. Pro- probably not. Uh, and the other thing is that people are going to just be obsessed by it and probably get a bit disappointed that if they go out every night and they don't see one for months, they're going to waste a lot of time. So I've always said the best way to chase these auroras is do a bit of research on what causes it and when it happens, get some apps you know, like the Aurora Australis app, I think I've got here, um, Aurora Alerts app, which is a really good one. Yep. Um, it will give you a bit of an idea. But I think the best method of knowing when to go out is exactly what we're on here is social media. Yeah. Uh, because people put live shots up. So if you've got a spot that's only 30 minutes away from your house that you want to go to, just keep an eye on Facebook or whatever. Yep. And when you see it going off, pack your camera, out yep. you go. And of course, the very nature of seeing an aurora is they happen at night. So really, you can't and, see them uh, during the day. <laughs> you could be, you know, as late as four o'clock in the morning when yep. it, when it happens. And yep. you know, unfortunately, us humans like our sleep at four a.m. So uh, it's a tough one. But uh, I remember, I remember there, a friend of mine, Cam Hadlow, and I went out to the southwest of Tassie on a promise that it was going to be this big, right? Ma- massive. We went out, and it turned out to be exactly what it is tonight. It had yep. all the readings, but just yep. one little parameter wasn't working. Yep. And we got home back to Hobart at 5 a.m. to go back to work at 8 o'clock that next morning. We both worked in the same place. Yep. We were dirty as, like, come on, it said it was going to happen. All the yep. figures were looking good. The graphs were good. We went to a spot. We had clear conditions, no moon, plenty of stars, and we saw nothing. Yeah. So if you are going to get addicted to these things, get addicted to a bit of disappointment as well because it's going <laughs> it's going to happen to you. So, yep. But it's awesome and... And it makes nights like last night all the more worth it when it Absolutely. pays off. And like you said, if you can share it with someone as well, like my kids were there last night. They, they were looking up. They're like, oh, my God, that's right there. They were really wrapped. Yeah. You yeah. had Abby. Uh, I know other friends are out with other friends. Like, it's yeah. a great out if yeah. you go out with people. Um, it is. Yeah. So um, so let's talk camera settings for the Aurora. So Auto. Um, yeah. Just point and shoot. Use your phone. Yeah. <laughs> Tends to that's work it. for me. Oh, it does. <laughs> Uh, so I shot on this very setup right here that I have in my hot little hands. This is my mm. uh, Olympus. Yes, it was still called Olympus when this thing came out. Yeah. M1X. Um, it's my big chunky camera. But the saving grace for Aurora is that little thing at the front there, the lens. Yes. This is my uh, Olympus 7-14 to f2.8 Pro lens. Uh, it is an absolute cracker for the Aurora. Yeah. For two reasons. One, it's bright. So it's an f2.8 lens. It's nice and bright. Two, it's wide. Um, last night's Aurora show, as you quite rightly pointed out, Cam, was happening almost in 360 degrees, but mm. at least 180 degrees field of view in front of you. And yeah, even this lens at 7 mil was struggling to capture that. So uh, for my money, the wider, the better. Now, I'm not telling everyone right now to go out and buy a lens like that. 
use what you've got. Yep. But if you're going to get addicted to Aurora photography, which you are, uh, I would highly recommend investing in some fast glass. Mm. Um, so at least F2.8, if not faster, uh, and preferably wide. Yeah. So that's why I love that lens. It's got that perfect mix of wide and fast. Yeah, um, totally. So I think what also- did, What did you use last night? Uh, so I used the, the, I used the OM one Olympus, um, and I used the Leica eight to 18 I've got, which is also a two, it's a great little lens. Um, and it's a, at a two, it's a 2.8 at the widest, uh, widest angle. The seven to 14 Olympus lens is great, but uh, like you said, if you're looking to, and I don't think it's just the raw, if you're looking to do any astro work, having that wide angle and fast lens is an absolute must, yep. uh, in your kit. Um, you know, you can buy some of those aftermarket brands like Samyon yep. or whatever they are, where they do manual focus astro lenses. But having something wide, I think you want to be 18 mil, 16 mil, 14 mil if you can get it somewhere that really wide angle. Yep. If you can get 2.8 as the widest aperture on the widest angle, that's really good. Uh, but yeah, I used the OM1 with that lens. Um, I can tell you what my settings were. They started off at 800 ISO, 2.8, 15 seconds. That was it. Yep. Uh, I actually had to dial it down. I started at 800 ISO. I dialed it down to 400 ISO because it was just like that. Yeah. It was just too, it was so bright. It was ridiculous. So, yep. um, but yeah, it's uh, having that wide angle lens is is a is a blessing when it comes to this. Yep. That like I said, that speed so as well. Can I just get you to reverse back over your settings, please? Thank you. Just yep. tell me again. So you started at what ISO? I started at 800 ISO. Yep. Which is different to what I normally do my astro at. I usually start at 1600 ISO, right. but when I got down there and I saw how bright it was, I knew I didn't I didn't need 1600 ISO sensitivity. Yep. I shot at f 2.8, so I had it wide open. I had my 10 second timer on as well, like you did. Yep. Uh, and my shutter speed, I think, was anywhere from 15 seconds to 10 seconds. It was yep. wasn't much at all. Um, I also used the star autofocus on the OM1 to focus on these stars here. Yep. Um, and that worked a treat. I, I can tell you now, I got out of the car and I had my first shot off in a minute. Yep. I had it all set up, ready to go. Bang. It was super simple. Yep. Yeah, it is. It's good to have mm. a nice, simple setup like that. Um, and the great thing about shooting Aurora, generally speaking, is once you've got your settings dialed in, then it's just composition searching, like most yep. photography we talk about. And that's yep. getting things in the foreground, and whether it be me and my daughter, or whether it be the tree behind you, or whether it be yep. a jetty or a lighthouse or a windmill or wherever you happen to be so that's yeah. that's where it's good like that yeah uh, i just want to quickly talk about uh manual focusing the lens um, yes and i know what you said about using the star autofocus that olympus is famous for yeah. um what i like to do with this lens in particular i like to focus it to infinity but it's funny because you, you say focus to infinity and everyone thinks well you got to turn it all the way mm. until it's at a stop which on, if I can show you on this lens, so you can turn it and then it actually, yes. you can't turn it anymore. Well, it goes to infinity and beyond. Correct. You've actually literally got to crank it back. Now I find on the seven to 14 lens, if you're looking down at the lens and you can see the little infinity symbol, when the marker is over the right hand side of that infinity symbol, yeah. this thing is sharp. Um, yeah. And I've done tests and that's when I found that it is at its sharpest is yeah. when it's over the right hand side of the infinity symbol. Yeah. Um, and then it's it. Then you're done. You're locked in. You've got your you've got your camera set up. Yeah. I was literally slinging this thing over my shoulder on the tripod, <clears throat> walking down the beach, taking more photos. Yeah. Didn't have to change the settings much at no, all. That's right. Except for what you said off the top. And that was that this damn Aurora was so bright. Yeah. I started at 1600. Within two shots, I was down to 800. Within yeah. two more shots, I was at 400 as well. That's right. Yeah. Because I'm shooting at f2.8. So That's right. we're letting in a lot of light. Yeah, absolutely. And another thing with the fo focusing is probably the hardest thing that people struggle with with Aurora. Is like you said, once you get your settings right, your exposure, it doesn't change much. Like it's fairly st standard most of the night. Yeah. But the focus at infinity can be a, a trick thing. So what a lot of people try and do though, they try and focus on stars and things like that. What I've learned over the years is that, okay, the stars are a long, 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 long way away. But infinity on the lens generally starts at like, 50 meters or something like that it's not that's right light years away so even on your photo there focusing on those lights of barwin heads that would be most likely infinity yeah so if you can't find a star to focus on you can use something down a bit lower on you know on the horizon that's away further to use your infinity marker so 
a lot of people get confused with that. Different if you're in complete pitch black and you've got no reference to work off. But um, but yeah, it was uh, the settings were pretty straightforward. And then, like you said, it's just composition. Yeah. yeah. And that's the thing. Like, it, uh, I actually had this conversation with my brother-in-law today. He's a keen photographer. Hmm. And, you know, you and I, we, we rattle off the settings. That's fine. But we do this on the daily. Like, we're, we're yeah. out there always, you know, doing long exposure photos or we're doing you know, waterfall shots. So we're doing you know, particular kinds of shots and we do it on rinse and repeat all the time. Yeah. There are people that wouldn't have shot an Aurora for a year. Yeah. They go out and I understand it. They, they just like, Oh, what, what do I do here? Yeah. Like, you know, and then sometimes it's just a matter of, okay, let's walk through it. It's dark. So you're going to need a higher ISO to absorb the light. Yeah. Yeah. Your camera is going to struggle to autofocus. So manual focus is probably best yeah. unless you've got a souped up, awesome camera that can focus on a star yeah. which a lot of a lot of listeners probably don't have or or, or yeah. uh, you know might have at some point but right now probably don't yeah i saw some awesome photos last night from nikon d3100s with their kit lens yeah you know at, at f3.5 that's totally yeah. fine but they compensated by boosting the iso to 1600 to 3200 that, that's right yeah you still get the shot so yeah you know, as I say, it's easy for us to sit here and rattle off the numbers, but practice makes perfect, folks. Even when there's not an Aurora, go out yeah. and do some astro work because that's going to really put you in good stead when yeah. your Aurora shows up. And I think that's an important thing, what you said there as well, the eye. So ISO seems to be that little that little mate that gets forgotten in the, the whole calculation. People think, yeah. I've got the aperture wide open and I've got 30 seconds. Why am I not seeing anything? Hmm. Well, the key to that is that you've got to tell the camera to be even more sensitive to light. That's like right. souping up that ISO. So a lot of people, if it's not bright enough or that they start changing the shutter speeds and and apertures when they really should just be doubling or doubling it again, that ISO yeah. to get more, more light, more sensitive uh, sensitivity to the sensor. So, but you're right. Yeah. We, we do this every day, day in and out. Um, like I, I have a set standard for Astro with my stuff. So for anyone wanting to write this down, grab a pen, get ready to go. So my my standard astro settings with no moon is ISO 1600, 2.8 aperture, and I start at 15 seconds. And from there, the only two things I look at changing is either I double the ISO up to 3200 or I will adjust the shutter speed slightly to 20 seconds or 10 seconds, depending on what's going on. I try not to go to 30 seconds because then you start getting movement in the stars. They start to track. So ISO 1600, wide open aperture, 15 seconds is a really good base exposure to start doing Astro and Aurora, whatever it is. And then from there, it's just minimal adjustments, either doubling that ISO or halving that ISO or just adjusting that shutter time a little bit. That's simple. Right. Yep, yep, it is. It is nice and simple and it's good to keep it nice and simple. So yeah. uh, pro tip folks, get in the habit of getting your camera out and this is how I change my ISO. This is how I set it to manual focus, this blah, blah, blah. And all the way through and then you'll be totally... Yeah. All over it next time the Aurora shows its beautiful head, which by all accounts and the, I don't know how they can judge this, but I'm hearing that 2024 is a big year for Aurora. Um, well, what it is, it goes through, the sun goes through cycles. Solar cycles. Solar okay. cycles. So what's happening, the sun is spinning and all of a sudden it's now facing us or coming around facing us at the right direction. And if the solar flares are there, we're, we're more, of a percentage to get some reaction. Um, I think it's like a seven year cycle or six year cycle Okay, where it starts going up and then it drops back down and stuff like that. So yeah. Very so right. hopefully like this, this, this year has already been pretty active. So it has. Yeah. 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 So if you, uh, you know, if you see an Aurora coming, come back here to episode 120 and watch this again, you'll learn well, everything you need to know. That's it. Just, just save this episode to your phone. <laughs> that's right and exactly. away you go yeah cool. uh righto's let's move on uh you want to do that a quick bit of gear talk cameron gear talk yeah if, if I, I'm, I'm gonna get one of these it's taking a while to come in but i, I think uh, i'm i think i might be hot on your heels as well it's yeah a good little unit a good little unit so i think we've said a few times on this show that compact cameras are almost dead and entry-level cameras are almost dead this is one little camera bucking the trend and it's the fuji x100 v i or six uh, it's a cool little rangy find, a little sort of, it's a bit of an Instagram, a hipster sort of camera, but it's a very cool little camera that I think is, is and it's bucking the trend because it's you can't get it. It's out, it's out of stock everywhere and you can't get one. So um, 
I think it's worth having a look at if people are interested in getting a really cool little compact camera for travel. They're not super cheap, but they all are very cool. Um, and it's made by Fuji. Um, but yeah, just the fact that you can't get them at all. Like, I think it's really cool, but yeah, uh, it's got some really retro sort of feel to it. It's got a nice yeah. little 35 mil lens on it. Uh, it's got some cool little color profiles that are built into it. It just looks cool. It is yeah. cool. And, and I want like a tank too, apparently. So yeah, 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 they are. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to getting my hands on one of those. Hopefully tomorrow, Tuesday, apparently there is stock. Okay. Maybe according to our good friend at DigiDirect Melbourne, not sponsoring the show. Not at all. Might uh, have to see one. Um, photography word of the week. Are we doing that one? Sure. Why not? Cool. Do you know what it means? I know what it means. Do you know what it means? Not a clue. That is excellent. I barely this know the, how to say it. This is going to be a, this is going to be fantastic for a number of different reasons. Oh, okay. Uh, smegma. Smegma. Now, I have heard that word before, <laughs> but not excellent. in a photographic sense. No, and we will not Google it if you want to. No, don't Google. Just definitely don't Google Smegma. No, don't Google it. You but might. You know what? You know what that is just. You know what that's just given us. What a slab of beer from Allison. Because she said, if I got you to say smegma on the show as the <laughs> photography word a week, she would buy us a slab of beer. Fantastic. So it's got nothing to do with photography. It's got nope. everything to do with what I think it's got to do with. Absolutely. Uh, do not. A, well unless, you, unless you are a vet or a nurse, you probably won't know what smegma means. So if I, how many, is if I say it 10 times, do we get 10 slabs? No, I don't know. But she, she said she's good for it. Uh, okay. So smegma. Yes. Word of the week for photography Brilliant. word of the week. Brilliant. You, you could you could use Smegma to get like a really sort of um, dreamy look on your lenses and stuff you like could. that. Let's just move right along. Um, Thanks, speaking Alison. Of, speaking <laughs> of getting beer off people. Yeah, it's a good segue, um, wasn't it? Because we've been off the air for a couple of weeks, we've yes. had a few beer donations. Thank you, everyone. We have indeed. Absolutely. Uh, so we have had a slab by Mallory, uh, Mel, I hope. Thank you, uh, Mel. Mel. Now, Mel, I hope you're going well. Mel's had a little bit of a hiccup. He's doing well, though. Um, so uh, he was meant to join me on a couple of workshops, but had to pull out, but that's okay. We're going to move him to later in the year. Yep. Uh, Sharon T, Stephen N, and Marion H all bought us a, a beer. I was going to say bought us a smegma then. Bought us a beer. <laughs> this show's gone off the rails. This is why we. This is why we can't have good things, Brendan. Let's just drive it straight into the ground, shall yeah, that's it? Uh... <laughs> um, we? We oh, do dear. need, we do I've need. Gone, I've gone bright red like the Aurora. You have, because I know how much people love it when we go into full mm. plug mode, but we do need to plug our 2025 schedule for our workshops. Do we? Um, well, we haven't done it for a couple of weeks, so we might okay. as well do it now. Uh, right. We've got workshops. So these are joint workshops that Cameron and I both run. They are a lot of fun. We uh, recently did our Tarkine to Cradle Mountain workshop. Uh, in two weeks' time, we have a Great Ocean Road workshop, which I am super pumped for. It's going to be awesome. Yes. Imagine if we got Aurora conditions like the last couple of days. That would be... Uh, oh, it would be pretty good. It would be a very tiring workshop. <laughs> we, 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 might, we might be skipping a few sunrises and sunsets if that's the case. That's exactly right. But um, uh, yeah, we are looking forward to that. But next year, we have our Mali to Murray workshop. We, we have another Great Ocean Road workshop. We have an, and then a couple in Tasmania. We have the Tarkine to Cradle Mountain workshop again. And we also have the uh, Bay of Fires and Freysonay workshop as well. We do. The East Coast one. I'm just going onto a little website so I can tell people when they're on. Yes. Um, <laughs> they'll be linked below with all the dates and everything like okay. that and all the info. So do you, want me to give you, do you want me to give you a quick rundown? Quick, quick. Yes, do it. Why not? Great Ocean Road. Uh, we're going, it's sold out obviously next month, but we're going again in February. Yes. So I'll just give them up the months. So DSPS, yep. uh, Great Ocean Road, February, late February. And then we're doing the Murray Mallee workshop in late March. Awesome. Great time of year to get up there. Absolutely. Then we're doing the Bay of Fires. Uh, it's a Fraser Night East Coast one, which is a new one, which will be very cool. Um, there is some awesome sand dunes there that if we get in the Aurora, we will be up there. We should <laughs> have night. been there last night. We would should be up there. That's in mid-May next year. And then we've got the Tark on the Cradle, which I tell you what, that's been a highlight of my year so far, that workshop. Yeah, that was that, a ripping, ripping that, trip. That worked really well. Uh, yes. So that's in August next year where we'll have a bit of snow around at Cradle. So so February, March, May, and August is when you need to start saving your pennies to come and join us. Absolutely. All that information can be found at dsps.com.au. That is dsps.com. 
www.dancemigna.com.au. That stands oh. for Down South Photo Show for those of you playing along at home. Not Down Smigna Photo Smigma. No. no. Well, can you stop saying that word, please? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, what do you got coming up this week, Cameron? Uh, I've got a week off at, uh, at home. Yep, you always say that, but you never end up having a week off. I am having a week off. Uh, so uh, and I'm, then I'm off to the Tarkine. Again, actually, I've got a workshop in the Tarkine, and then mm. I'll be up there with you guys doing the Great Ocean Road one. Which is so, in a couple of weeks, as we said. So um, I, awesome. want to, I want to give a bit of a shout out. I think from the last episode, when was that last episode? Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. So since then, I've done a couple of macro workshops. You have, with the lovely. With the lovely and the one and only Cheryl uh, from WA. It sounds like she's a, some sort of show girl. Um, but from WA, who's an incredible macro photographer, really nice human being as well, which makes it easy to work with. Uh, we did two two-day workshops, so one at Cradle Mountain and then we did one at Mount Field, so one in the north and south of Tassie. Uh, we're going again. We've got two of these workshops set up for uh, August later in the year, and we will also have another two-day one in Melbourne sometime in July that we're going to release soon as well. So if you like your macro stuff and you're in Melbourne, uh, somewhere in middle middle of July there might be a macro workshop going on. Otherwise, otherwise, come and join us in August. But they were really cool. Um now, I've done a lot of workshops in my day. You've done a lot of workshops. Mm. Uh, it seems only fitting that someone who's doing their very first workshop got probably the biggest reaction out of a group that I've ever seen that I've never had. I don't know if it's because she's a woman and I'm a man and meant that people just don't listen to us, or maybe she knows more than us. I don't know. Maybe she delivered it better. Maybe it's the English accent. I don't know what it is. But we were at Cradle Mountain in that Weindorfers forest area that we went to where the Fagus yes. was. And we started off the workshop doing some natural light macro workshop uh, photography. And then we brought out this flash with this diffuser on it. And I I left them go in the forest and Cheryl and I were just at the van packing a few things up. So we gave them the settings and off they went. And collectively we heard this, holy shit, how cool is this? Like collectively from about <laughs> eight different people. And we both just stopped and looked at each other and went, oh, I guess that's good then. Like they mm. were blown away by this diffuser and the flash and the effects that you get of these macro shots yeah I've, ne I've never had that i've had a few people go oh wow that's really cool yeah the whole group at once so it was very cool good that moment is awesome that is epic hmm. um so while we're on the topic of workshops one really quick last plug is for my own workshop i'm running a four-day ballerine yes. peninsula workshop in august this year Put putting your big boy pants on I am. Yes, it's about time, right? Yeah, um, over to so you. if you want to join me in my backyard and come and not literally, but figuratively, if join me here on the Ballerine Peninsula, right here, in fact, like that yeah. background. Um, and you guarantee uh, auroras? Yes, sure. Why, Why not? not? <laughs> yeah, of some kind. Um, yeah. <laughs> So what we do is we we uh, a four day workshop. It's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in August. Um, we have a little bus. We're going to get around. We're going to go shoot sunrises, shoot sunsets, and everything in between. We're going to cover the entire Ballerine Peninsula, one of Victoria's hidden gems for photography. So nice. um, there will be a link in description for all that sort of stuff as well. Anyway, that's enough about workshops and plugging what we do. Um, that's probably been the podcast. Yeah, that's it. That's just that was easy. It was like we've done that before. A week a couple of times the um yeah uh good luck aurora hunting everyone hopefully what we've talked about tonight will help you um uh, it is a real thrill to shoot yeah. the aurora and yeah. uh with any luck the conditions continue to improve i've been continuously checking while we're talking tonight and it's looking like tonight's getting pushed back later and later if it happens at all yeah so, i think i think it's fried tonight it could be so uh um but i'll tell you see. what if people are out chasing auroras and they're a little bit confused or they're stuck on something please send the down south photo show facebook page a message and one yep. of us will answer you with a settings question unless Absolutely. it's stupid o'clock in the morning if it's after midnight don't bother yeah but we will answer you, but it won't be while you're It won't you're be out. straight away. But if you're um, going to be reasonable before midnight, I'll probably still be up. Um, if you're out shooting and you're not just not getting what you want, send us a message. We'll quickly walk you through it. That could open up a box of worms that we don't want to deal with. But that's I might okay. edit that part out. <laughs> just beep, 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 beep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, cool. Excellent. Awesome. All right. Nice to see you again. It feels like Yeah, you too, ages. mate. And mm. we'll see you very, very soon. This has been episode 120 of the Down South Photo Show. We will see you for episode 121, possibly next week. Bye. That's all, folks. Oh, yibbity yibbity. <laughs>